Hey friends and welcome back. My name is Chrissy. This is Stronger Every Day. It's great to be with you all. Today we're going to talk about the comparison game. I've touched on this in a couple different videos and God, just listening to, to some of the things that I've felt, listening to some of the things that you all have told me that you've been dealing with and felt, I, I just... God just kind of put it on my heart to really kind of dive deep into this one and go over some things. And so we're going to start with reading Galatians 6, 4 through 5. I'm going to read it in two different translations just because I, I like them both. I think they both have a little bit different way to, to talk about it. And then we'll kind of dive deep. The first one is in the Amplified Bible. It says that each one must carefully scrutinize his own work examine his actions attitudes and behavior and then he can have the personal satisfaction and inner joy of doing something commendable without comparing himself to another for every person will have to bear with patience his own burden of faults and shortcomings for which he alone is responsible this one is the ESV version which says each one should test their own actions then they can take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to someone else for each one should carry their own load. So I hope what I say makes sense in the fact that our comparison should be the word of God. That's what I compare myself to. I don't compare myself to my neighbor. I don't compare myself to anything they do say, speak, look like, drive, wear, live in. I don't compare to anybody else around me. I compare myself to, to how strong am I in the Lord? What's my knowledge in God? That's what I'm competing with to be the best version of Chrissy that I can be, to be the most Christ-like that I can be, not with anybody else around me. Our joy is in God. You already have joy. It's one of the fruits of the Spirit. It's not in your, it's not in what people think of you. It's not in your job title. It's not in what whatever that might be. It's not in the evaluation of what people think you should should do, look like, say, speak. Not even your job performance. Our joy is in God. One of my favorite songs is Brandon Lake and Phil Wickham. I, I don't know exactly who wrote it, but I know that they sing it. And the first verse is, I've searched the world, but it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough. Friends, I cannot say that enough. It's never going to be enough. If, if that's what you're looking for, if you need that applause, if you need that cheering section on your side to make you feel worthy, you're never going to find what you're looking for. People are always going to let you down. We're human. I love my husband second to none other than God. I'm going to let him down at some point. I, I, I want to be his biggest cheerleader. I want to be his, you know, I want to be in his corner, but it's not my job to maintain his joy for him. It's not his job to maintain my joy. It's, it's learning that I don't need to compare myself to anyone. I would encourage you to read Romans 12, all of it, the whole verse. Don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world, but be transformed by God into a new person. Sometimes we need to take a true evaluation of ourselves. And this one might even hurt a little bit because we each have different gifts. I would love to have a beautiful singing voice. I can carry a tune, but I'm certainly not a singer. I love listening to just good Christian music, uh, even good country music just being played. Mostly Christian is what I listen to, some country. Just the, the vocals that some of these men and women have are just truly, absolutely amazing. I'm not jealous because I don't have that gift. I am not naturally a creative person. I have to think hard about being creative, even creative ideas to handle different things. It's just not, it doesn't come secondary to me, but a lot of people are, and I appreciate that. I'm not comparing myself to that. Sometimes you're a better better helper. I'm a, I'm a great helper. Nick and I both, we, we love helping others, and it's, it's not a sacrifice. It's just something we, we enjoy doing. That's, you know, people shouldn't be jealous of us because we, we enjoy helping people. I, I pulled some interesting figures that I thought you might be interested in. So, um, one of them is the average debt across America today. 
and this was in 2022, is $104,215. $104,215 is the average American debt. The average credit card debt, which I kind of think this is a smidge low, but again, this was in 2022, is $7,951. $1.616 trillion is what Americans owe on vehicles. $1.616 1, 1, 1, $1. trillion is what we owe on vehicles getting to where we're going. 165.5 billion in new car loans were taken out in the first quarter of 2024. 2 million Americans every year run up $50,000 in credit card debt every year. In 2023, the average American home, the debt that we're in, is $244,498, the average American home. Average American auto debt is almost $24,000. The average credit card debt is almost $6,500. And the average student loan debt is almost $40,000. All of these things that you see, these big beautiful houses, these big beautiful cars, this education that we've gotten, these these fancy clothes, these, the jewelry, the vacations, all of the things, most Americans are not paying cash for those. I know of, I can tell you three people that I know in my life, good, good close, either family or friends, right now today, that can pay cash for a home. And I mean a nice home. They can pay cash for a vehicle. They can pay cash for land. They can pay cash for jewelry and credit and whatever. They don't have to charge it. They can actually pay cash. I know three people in my life, three. And we know a lot of people, um, both friends, family, and then acquaintances. We know a lot of people. Nick grew up in a small town, so kind of everybody knows everybody. Three people that I know that could pay cash. So we're comparing ourselves to not reality, right? When you see these beautiful beach vacations or this tropical vacation, a lot of those people did not pay cash for that. They put it on a credit card. And what I mean by paying cash, most of the time you have to put it on a credit card, but I mean immediately paying it off as soon as the bill comes. I'm saying that they are taking months and years to pay off said vacation. It's all keeping up with the Joneses, keeping up with the look, keeping up with the facade. And why are, why are we doing that? It causes nothing but stress, anxiety, depression, eating disorders. It causes all kinds of mental health things. Why are we doing that to ourselves? I don't want to keep up with anybody. Nick and I live in a 1300, basically 1300, I think. Might be, it's either a little over or a little under. Might be a little under. Anyway, 1300 square foot manufacturer's home. We are perfectly happy with this. We have 13 acres and we love it. We have two cars that are both good. They're fairly new. I think one's a 2017, one's a 2018 and they are paid off. We do plan on one day expanding. What One thing that we've learned, and I'm not saying it's you shouldn't have things, that you don't need things, you shouldn't want things, you shouldn't you know, get a bigger home or, or have a, a car that works. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is that one thing we've learned is that we would like to expand. Not because we need the square footage per se, but because we need things to be a little bit different. So like the, the layout of this is our bedroom. So letting this be a guest room in case one day that we have a family member that needs to come live with us, then they have a pretty good size room and a bathroom adjoined. And then we want to, to create another bedroom and bathroom out the back that's a, a master bedroom and bath that has a walk-in shower. We've really underestimated the need for ever needing one of those until you can't step into the bathtub. So both of ours have are the tub shower just 
insert, you know, combos. And that's been really hard for Nick to get in, at, in and out of. And even for me, when different surgeries I've had, it's been hard to get in and out of. And so we very well see the need for that. I'm not comparing that I think, you know, Sally, Sally Joe across the holler has a, a bigger house. And so I want a bigger house. It's not wrong to, to need things and want things. It's not wrong to spend money on yourself. It's not wrong to have nice things. That's not what I'm saying. So don't, don't misinterpret that. What is wrong is when you, you feel less than because you're in your mind, you're not interpreting that you have the same thing as Sally Joe down the, down the street. It's irrelevant. Find, find what your, where your peace is. Find where your happiness is and go all in in that. I truly don't think that God's going to promote you if you can't be content. I'm not saying that you don't want other things, but that you're content with what you have. You're blessed with what you have and that, and that then God can give you more. But if he's already given you something and you can't be happy with that or blessed with that, if you think about even people that we are in the poverty level, right? Even people that are in poverty level here in America are still have it better than a lot of people around this world. Do you have it as easy as someone who has a million dollar home or has a 10, a, you know, a $10 million home with a, with a butler and a maid and a nanny and has a chauffeur? I mean, let's, we're not comparing apples to apples here, you know? My life isn't like that. I can't imagine my life ever being like that. I don't think I would ever want that. But anyway, for a whole different reason. But so it's 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 getting out of the comparison game, right? Quit looking at a reel or reels on social media and seeing all these things that you think these people have when there's no transparency of, okay, this vacation that we just took, it costs ten thousand dollars and so now we're gonna have to sacrifice for the next year and a half to pay that back but whoa did it look good in pictures you know and i'm not saying that's why we take pictures is to is so that people can think it's more a lot of times it is for the memories my mom was a huge picture taker i have totes and totes and totes of pictures that my mom took nobody's seen them outside of our family she didn't take them for that reason i'm not saying that that's why we we always take pictures but we we do tend to look through and compare ourselves. I want to encourage you not to do that. There's no need to compare ourselves to anybody else. We so take our our sight that that's something the devil loves is to is to play in that area of making us feel like we need to work harder, work longer, cut out church, cut out prayer time, cut out praise time, cut out worship time. You don't have time for that. You got to make money, right? You got to get that new dress that you want. And you got this big social engagement or a big reunion, a family reunion or a high school reunion or whatever kind of reunion or a big business meeting and you got to look important. Why? Now, I'm not saying you go in there in a shirt, t-shirt with holes in it and your, your bathing suit bottoms and some flip-flops to a big fancy affair, but I don't think you also need to spend $10,000 on a dress and $5,000 on a pair of shoes. I just, I don't. Be you. Be authentically you. There's nothing wrong with you. I would rather have the peace of mind of knowing that we have what we have. We've been blessed with that, and I don't need more. Um, we have it. We have visions of expanding this home. We want it to add a garage. We need a little bit more storage. Our our closets are tiny, and honestly, it's not from clothes because we don't have a ton of clothes. It's from Christmas decorations. <laughs> I've said in a couple of videos that we tend to go big at Christmas and then um, when my my dad moved from the home that we grew up in and bought the new house that he's in he sent with me all of a lot of the pictures and then he sent with me also a lot of the Christmas decorations because mom dad decorates but not you know not like mom and I did and so now we have all of their decorations and our decorations and so we have a lot we have a lot of decorations but so our closets are little um our master ones a good size but our our quote-unquote extra bedrooms are it's a just it's a little it's a little closet so and it's full of christmas but we want a garage 
put our vehicles in, help protect them a little bit, and then have some extra storage and things in there. And then, like I said, we want to do that bedroom. It's not, it's not wanting things that's a problem. It's wanting things because you want to be equal to someone else. It's because you want to think in your mind that you're somehow equal. And I'll go back to that song every time. I've searched the world, but it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough friends find who you are in god find who you are in god not your title not that you're a husband or you're a wife or you're a ceo or you're a doctor or you're a lawyer or you're a teacher or you're a preacher or you're a preacher's wife or you're you know you're a manager at a restaurant or you work at this the 7-eleven you're a clerk at 7-eleven that's not your it's not about your title it's not about that nick's the captain of our organization it's not about i'm the secretary i say i'm the note taker uh, it's not about titles it's not about any of that it's about who are you in christ that will never go away that will never go away. I'm more than just Nick's wife. I'm more than Don's daughter. I'm more than my brother's sibling. I'm more than anybody anybody's title that they can give me. I'm more than a than a receptionist. I'm I'm more than any of these titles. They're just they're just phrases that people tag on to you. What I am is a child of God and I love God with all my heart. I run hard for him. I want to know that the one thing I want to grow and learn in more than anything ever is growing closer to God in my relationship with him. Whether I do that with holes in my drawers or, you know, in a 5,000 square foot home, it, it doesn't matter. It, you're no less important or let, God's not going to love you any more than he does the day he met you. The minute that you gave your heart to God, he's not going to love you anymore, no matter what you do. But he's, I, I do think that he says, that's my girl. That's my boy. When we do something that, that is, is for him that is giving the glory to him. I've talked about on this channel, we recently hit a thousand subscribers. And God did that. I, it's interesting that once I hit a thousand subscribers, I started getting all these comments and all these uh, emails and, and messages on my Instagram about, you know, let me help you with your, your search ends and traffic. You should be having more than that. And I'm like, no, God, God's got that. Thanks. I'm, you know, if God's in control of that. I, I don't need any of that. Um, the 11,000 people found their way here because God led them, not because the search engine told them to. So, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with using those companies, but for this, um, I just feel like, you know, unless God leads me that, hey, you know, if we, if he leads me to someone that can help this channel reach more people than it needs to reach, then maybe that would be a conversation I'd have to do some praying about to make sure that I'm hearing that from him. But right now, um, God's my search engine and he's um, leading this channel. And it's just, it's just in awe that um, before I started this and keep this in mind when you're trying, when you're doing all the comparison games and the devil's telling you that it's it's stupid and you shouldn't do it and nothing's ever going to be the same nothing's ever going to work that the devil told me all that and more before i started this channel um he did not want this channel to come to fruition he does not want it to stay in fruition i fully believe that that's why so many things have happened since april to our family and i mean hard knock the wind out of you struggle to get up sometimes hard things have happened in our family but god i'm not comparing myself friends if, if there's one thing i could give you first it would be that that your mental health is clear that your the struggle is gone it's been lifted um i want everybody to have that peace and have that that um feeling of just what some people take take advantage take for granted don't take advantage that take um, for granted that they have every day that they don't have to think about living they don't have to think about wishing they weren't here it, it never enters their mind but the things that we deal with on a day in and day basis the second one would be that we just turn all in to god um, maybe those are in the wrong order but you know what i mean just t turning all in to God, just being all in for Him, our focus being on Him, our priorities being on Him, not on, you know, what we wear, what we live in, what we ride in, what we have on our body for jewelry, um, all of the things and, and all of the, the fancy 
vacations and whatever else. I want to be happy in the everyday. I don't want to have to wait for that 10% of my life to come. I want to be happy in 100% of it. The 90% day in and day out, everyday task. And that's something that I've had to learn to do. It doesn't come naturally for me. I have to learn to enjoy cleaning my house. It's not all, it's not just that I'm learning to enjoy that. It's that I'm appreciative that I have a house to clean. I'm appreciative that I have this big fat mattress you see back here. I'm appreciative, I'm appreciative I have that to sit on. I'm appreciative that when I'm hurting, I have medicine that I can take. I have a heating pad or an ice pack that I can use. I have a vehicle that gets me to and from. I have a roof over my head. It's been raining a ton here in Tennessee. It's currently raining right now. I'm not getting wet. You know why? Because I have a roof over my head. The blessings that we get on a day in and day out basis. I want to be excited about getting up every morning and going to work because sometimes I'm going to be real honest. I'm tired and I would just really, really love to have another hour sleep. But I know that, that God's going to lead me to do something for somebody that day. Even if it's smiling at somebody when they're scared. Even if it's talking with somebody for three to five minutes that takes their mind off of it. Or even if it's sitting with, with one of the people I work with and just listening to their story. Friends, I end every video this way. It's always my heart and hope that you feel this. God loves you and he loves you for you just the way you are. I love you. Your family, your friends love you, and we need you here. We'll see you in the next one, friends. Bye.